Hi guys, it's Meg and this week I was going to have a more sort of like uplifting sort of video. I was going to do like a makeup recreation. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it will be coming. However, I've decided to just put that aside for today because all this stuff in the news at the minute, I just couldn't ignore it. Um, it's very close to my heart. Like today, as you can see by our title, we are talking about men's mental health. Uh, this isn't taken away from women's mental health. It is just, this doesn't get talked about a lot. Mental health alone doesn't get talked about a lot, but especially men's. Um, I will be reading a lot from my iPad today just because I have facts and things that I want to read from. I don't want to get anything wrong. So if you see me looking down, that's why. So when I was looking for these facts, I did know a lot of them. Some of them I didn't know. But they are quite shocking so if this is a sort of touchy subject to you either click off if you don't like hearing about this sort of thing but that is the problem people don't like hearing about it because it is shocking and we need to get this out we need to talk about it we need to make this a uh, normality to talk about we can't hide away from this anymore it's with us it's in front of us it's happening every day 12 men die every day from suicide it's just crazy suicide is the biggest cause of death under men of 35 three out of four suicides are men like it's just it's just crazy 12.5 percent of men are suffering from mental health in the uk so it could be people that we know who never talk about it could be the bubbly sort of people it could be people who have so much drive and charisma and have all these plans for them but they are suffering and they are not talking about it so how are we to know it's like there might be signs we could pick up just talk to your friends talk to your dad your brother your boyfriend your partner your husband your uncle anyone if you see any sort of glimpse that anything could be wrong just have a chat don't go pounding in with really hard questions but just try and talk to them see how they are if you feel like they're having a bad day, text them. If you feel like they've been down for quite a while, arrange to do something with them. Make sure you text them every day. Like it's, it's not down to you if something happens, but you might be the one to help prevent it. Men are three times more likely than women to be affected by drugs or alcohol. It's kind of like an escape mechanism for them. It hides anything they have going on, so they don't have to talk about it. They can just blame it on the alcohol. They can blame it on the drugs. With those sort of addictions as well, I have with one addiction of those, not myself, but I have experienced it hands-on, face-to-face -face for many, many, many years. Again, not me, but someone I'm very close to, and it is an escape. You drink or you take drugs to get yourself out of that. Also, it pushes people away that are around you. It's kind of a sort of like excuse that if they want to be on their own, like they want to push people away because you obviously don't want to be around that person if they're causing conflict all the time or if they're choosing alcohol or drugs over you and they probably know that so they're trying to push you away but you can't it's a really hard one because you can't stay with someone or be around someone who's toxic for you but if you feel like they need help you can't force them to get help it's just one of those things it's a very hard touchy subject and I'm just going to put a disclaimer out, obviously I am not a specialist myself, I am going to leave loads of like pages and charities and help plans, everything down below. So if you actually do need help, if you need someone to talk to, if you're struggling yourself, or if you know someone who you think is struggling, then call some of the numbers down below. I've got um, Samaritans, Calm and Mind, I'll link them down below. I'll try and find some more for you, but they're the main three that were coming up every time I was researching. So this is one of the most shocking facts that I found, for me anyway. Only 36% of men actually get help, which I find crazy, whether that's going to their GP, calling up a charity, going to an open walking charity, just anything like that. I just find it bizarre that only 36%, like that is just crazy because it's such a big thing, it shouldn't be taboo. And I think a lot of thing with men is, it's there's always man of the house or act like a man or my the quote i hate 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 is man up i if i could get rid of one quote in life that would be it what makes a man man up what is a man you know like i don't know if that sounds stupid or if that's just me but a man shouldn't have to man up because they're having a bad day a man shouldn't have to not cry because if men cry they're not manly enough like i just don't understand it if a man cries 
they get kind of ripped the shit out of. Like, why can't a man cry? Why can't a man say how he's feeling? Why can't a man go to the doctor and say, actually, I feel like I'm depressed. Actually, I have anxiety. It's not just women that have anxiety, depression, but it's only women who talk about it. I'm gonna read these next two off my iPad just cause they are a little bit longer. The things like this is why it is a taboo sort of situation because I have this quote here and it is 191,000 men a year report they are overstressed from work causing depression or anxiety. Now myself personally, I feel like a lot of workplaces, they don't offer that sort of support. Um, but then again, it's if the support is there will they actually go and seek it so it is very hard which is why it's which is why it is taboo because you can't force someone to go and see help so if you if you're working with someone and <clears throat> sorry if you're working with someone and you feel like they might be suffering and you don't want to talk to them because you feel like if you do it they'll push you away or they might not actually be there much be having just a bad day and that was the end of it but it is a very fine grey line. I do feel like workplaces could do more, but it's, if they did do more, would it help? It is, it, it is a hard one. In 2017, 5,821 suicides happened in Great Britain and 76% were men. 76%, it, it's just crazy. With men, I also feel like it is that stigma of, like I said again, having to be the man of the house and the man having to support the woman or look after the woman or their children and I don't know it's a lot of what ifs and how can we change that how can we make this a topic that is so easy to talk about this is what saddens me the most when I was kind of looking for examples of people there were so so many but here I just some of the few men who have been affected by this. Robin Williams, age 63, was battling from depression intensely and it soon came out after that he was actually dealing with Parkinson's and he died in 2014. Kurt Cobain, age 27, the singer of Nirvana, he was dealing with depression and a drug addiction and he died in 1994. Some people may or may not know this one, but it is Alexander McQueen. He was a fashion designer and he was intensely, intensely close with his mother and <clears throat> unfortunately she passed away and he just could not cope with it and a few days later took his own life in 2010. So Johnny Lewis, he was an actor in Rachel Voice, Sons of Anarchy and he was suffering with depression and took his own life in 2012. I am going to read this one because there's a few little bits but this is one that is very close to my heart because he is someone who I looked up to when I was younger um, it is Vincent van Gogh, he was 37, battling with depression, also had bipolar and epilepsy along with many other things and he took his own life in 1890. I am also going to read this one as well, it is Tony Scott, he was 68, brother of the famous director Ridley Scott and um, he directed Top Gun and True Romance and many other films. He left no suicide note with no claims, his brother Ridley did announce that he was battling with cancer and the battle was winning and he died in 2012. So this is actually one that I only found out yesterday. I don't know how I didn't know this, but it honestly, it did, did shock me. And um, also my boyfriend didn't even know this, so I don't know if it had a lot of coverage or not, or if I just did not see it, but it is Vern Troyer. He was 49 years old. He was obviously best known for playing Mini-Me and brought so much joy to people's lives. But in the end, his depression just took over too much and he killed himself in 2018 with alcohol overdose. So this is one I know that a lot of people are going to know. This is Avicii, he was 28 years old, he had severe depression and took his life in 2018. This is another one that's very close to my heart, it is Linkin Park singer Chester Bennington. He took his own life in 2017. Now the reason why this one is very close to my heart, because if you listen to the album that they released, before he killed himself. Each song is basically a cry for help. I don't know if a lot of people have heard it. The album didn't go down well, which some people claim that that might have been the reason that just kind of tipped him over the edge. But honestly, it's one of the best albums I've ever heard. It is the rawest album. It is just amazing. Lyrically, it's brilliant, but it's so, so devastatingly sad. 
if you get the chance to listen to it please listen to it please show it some love because this album should have blown up and people should have known but this is what i mean people a lot of people also ignore the signs and this one really 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 got to me the next one is keith flint singer of prodigy i think i said that right i always struggle with that one but he took his own life in 2019 after suffering with depression for a very very long time this one is very close to me um unfortunately i never got the chance to meet even though i would have loved to um, we did exchange sort of few, few messages online, but this is Chris Hardman. He kind of rose to fame in rock school. I don't know if anyone saw it. It was a sort of program that was on when I was younger. Um, he was a singer, an amazing singer and songwriter and musician, but he just couldn't cope with the fame and what came after fame. And he took his own life in 2015. This is one of the main reasons why I'm making this video. I feel like this one kind of rocked the nation very, very hard. It took me by surprise. It, I actually didn't realize how much this would actually affect me. Um, I've been trying to read up and just research anything I could of this because it just kind of blew my mind. I'm talking about Mike Telicity. I, I'm, I was really sorry. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but it is Mike from Love Island. His sort of stage name was Muggy Mike. I've seen that some of his friends don't like him being referred to the Muggy Mike, but some of his close friends have also said that he kind of loved to be referred to that. It was kind of his stage name. It was just something that he had a bit of fun with. So I'm just going to call him Mike. I don't want to offend anyone in this. So I'm just going to call him Mike. He was only 26 years old. I just, yeah. I just can't go over it. I watched, I did watch Love Island, so I watched Mike from when he first went in to obviously until now. Um, I've kind of followed his career. He had a restaurant he was opening up with his best friend. He had booked trips to go away. He had all these plans to do things, which is what makes it so hard. I'm going to leave an interview from this morning with one of his close friends, Montana, who was also on um, Love Island with him and she just kind of talks a little bit more about it so if you want to know a bit more information about Mike I'll link that down below. It was somewhere around last year he was going through a very very rough patch in his life. Um, Montana herself said that if something like this happened last year it wouldn't have surprised her as much which is still such a shame. This is what made it so upsetting and confusing this time because he was on such a good path he was going back to the gym getting into his fitness again. Like I said, he was starting his own business, which she is going to help. Um, actually, she's gonna start the restaurant with his best friend who he's gonna do it with, which is amazing of her. But um, I think this one did rock the nation a lot because he is very young. Like I said, 26, he had all this stuff going for him, all this stuff planned, but he obviously just couldn't find a way out, which it's just so, so sad. Like to not be able to feel like, just to not be able to feel like that there is anything that you can do to find that way out. Like, I've kind of touched upon it before in another video, but I have been in this sort of situation. <sighs> so, like, pray that I never, ever, ever, I don't feel like I would ever feel like that again. But I know what it's like to kind of feel like that you don't want to be here anymore, that there is no point in being here anymore, and that you just can't find a way out. But to actually take those stages to like take your life i just find it so devastating that people like himself couldn't find someone to talk to like i found a lot of charities friends and my i always say my boyfriend saved my life like if he didn't come in at the right time um it's so many dark things and it is such a taboo thing like one of my um family friends she was my neighbor she did an amazing post on facebook i'll ask her if i can share it or link it down below but she basically just touched on the fact that these sort of things that even if you you've never felt sort of suicidal thoughts before even on some medications they do say like your doctor has to say to you this could cause suicidal thoughts if it does contact your gp because the first two weeks you're kind of your brain is realigning again i don't really know the sort of it was ins and outs of that but um it is very hard because even if you never felt suicidal thoughts before your 
some medications will make you feel like that but you'll know in your head that you don't want to do it but then you'll also it's kind of like a fighting battle with yourself now this isn't me saying don't use medication because if you need to use medication use it those thoughts are past thousands and hundreds of thousands of people have used this medication and it's helped them so there's some it's not for all people it's just some people um may experience that but it is very hard to talk about um you don't want to tell your best friend or your boyfriend or your family that you've been having suicidal thoughts it's not something they want to hear it's not something you want to admit but it has to be made a norm obviously it is a very very hard topic to bring up it's a very hard topic to talk about but if it doesn't become easier it's not going to change these stacks are just going to keep going up and up and up suicidal rates are going to get even larger but something needs to change and it needs to change soon i do think sometimes social media doesn't help you see all these people online with these flashy lives jetting off to different holidays all these brand deals and people are struggling nine to five jobs can't even afford to pay their bills can't afford to pay their rent and then they see all these luxurious lives online and they're like why can't that be me but that's not the reality mike had tons of followers tons of love but with the love always comes hate and people don't realize that a lot of your favorite youtubers celebrities um social media personalities they don't talk about the downside of that they don't talk about the death threats they get the insults they get the criticism constantly and it does take a very strong mind to block all that out because i've had it like my channel is tiny compared to loads and loads and loads of people like, i've hardly got any subscribers but i still get hate i still get criticism i've had death threats before but i just block it out because i'm glad i do because if this was a few years ago i might not have been able to when the story came out about my whole breast reduction thing in the new in my local news the amount of nasty comments i got to lose weight you're fat you should get gastric band if you stop eating and um, if you stop eating then maybe they'll shrink the amount of disgusting things i got and these people were like 40 to 50 to 60 year old men and mainly women who were just bashing me down just giving me disgusting things and then even going out of their way to message me on facebook to tell me these things i just don't understand the mindset of some people like people should be bringing everyone up like, especially women for women like bring them up don't bring people down all the time like if you feel like someone's having a bad day like i said earlier message them call them arrange that for a meal just send them a nice inspirational quote just anything that might be the difference between them having a bad day and them taking their life like i said when i was struggling my boyfriend didn't know he wasn't my boyfriend at the time he was before but we broke up it's a long story um i had bad bad days when i was having my bad days he would randomly pop up a text just how are you um just just start a conversation but he didn't know that they were the worst days that could have been the last worst days he didn't know that what i was going through to the extent i was going through he didn't know the thoughts i was having in my head those messages those simple simple hi how are you send me a random thing um he didn't know the extent that that would cause on me which is why he is my best friend and <laughs> he does well yeah i don't really know what to say but yeah he um if it wasn't for him i think it would have been a very different topic now but i'm not saying that if you're going for it you have to have someone to rely on that he was just someone who pulled me out helped me see that there are better things and if anything did happen to me i wouldn't have had all the amazing experiences i've had now yeah i've had some really shitty days and my life isn't going on the path i want it to go on even now um and i am struggling now i am very intensely struggling with anxiety and in and out of depression but I don't show that all the time. Um, I have got tablets I can go on now. I do have them here now with me. But at the minute, I just feel like I want to try and do it on my own. I haven't told anyone that I am going through this really at the minute. But now I feel like, why? Why haven't I? It's if you've got a headache, you take a headache tablet. If you have a bad stomach, 
you take something for your stomach like I just it's just one of those things it's an illness it's a mental health illness and if you can take something to help it then you should if you feel like that's the best thing for you at the minute I feel like I'm getting out of it myself but a lot of people can't do that so I know this video has kind of been like a rambling on but I just can't stress enough just please please if you're struggling help yourself talk to someone talk to your neighbor talk to your friend talk to a random person in the street ask them if they're having a good day start a conversation start this conversation of mental health it shouldn't be like this we shouldn't be seeing every other week another person killing themselves another man killing themselves it has just got to stop in this video obviously i'm not going to promote any of my social medias i'm not going to link them all down below because it's not about this today today is just about mental health awareness and this has to stop this all has to stop this needs to become a normality to talk about it it can't be a taboo subject anymore this is real life this is what happens on the daily 12 times a day for men and it needs to stop so like i said i am not a specialist i'm not a counselor i do the best i can if you want to reach out to me i can talk to you i can't really give you advice i can help you but i'm not trained for that but i will talk to you if you just want to have a normal chat with me if you want to have a friend to talk to i am here if you want to do that but i will leave all charities down below all the helplines you need but please please if you're going through this do not feel ashamed it's nothing to be ashamed about just please please get help on that note i hope you have a brilliant day morning and night and i will see you next week bye guys